Hello guys, this is Pavel Skor from Laravel Daily Team and Laravel Daily Video Channel. Today I have a serious topic for you, controversial serious topic. Let's talk about automatic testing in Laravel, PHP unit and all that stuff. And I think a couple of things are really wrong here with uh, automatic testing, uh, which I'm not a big fan of and I will explain why. I mean, a lot of you will hate me for these thoughts, but that's fine. I mean, there are different opinions in the world. Uh, in my team for smaller projects, for our projects uh, in freelancing, testing didn't really stick. That TDD approach, we tried it, uh, we played around with it, but it didn't really stick. And here's why. So there are three reasons why, in my opinion, uh, a lot of people are doing testing wrong or thinking about testing wrong or in other words, there are three problems with automatic testing. Problem number one is lack of real-life examples and uh, all the documentation and all the articles basically are teaching syntax of testing. So if you go to Laravel page, there's a whole section called testing in official documentation and there are examples of like posting some data and test if it returns like URL uh, like the result URL is this, or testing if JSON returns this or that, or testing status code to 100. Uh, same actually happens with uh, all the articles. So if you Google Laravel testing or Laravel unit testing, you will see examples like uh, test, uh, uh, test if array contains something, or uh, like the basic example, which is included actually in Laravel. <clears throat> example cases like uh, visit the homepage and see if it contains Laravel. That's syntax, guys. I mean, it's not real-life examples. Real-life examples for bugs is uh, test if uh, user uh, uh, successfully... Let me rephrase it another way. Test if user successfully finished the operation given that his uh, database status was this and given that before that he did this, this and this and and another factors so what i've looked what i've seen in my experience with real bugs happening usually bugs are edge cases which you didn't even think about you didn't even think about testing those cases so even in our quickadminpanel.com the the bugs that we receive via bug snack that some file hasn't been generated like in file storage and system we didn't even think about that probability and the there are some really edge cases or for example we didn't think that the customer would create menu item then create another menu item related to that then delete that parent menu item and then something screws up uh, it's really hard to to write tests for that for these specific edge cases and the syntax that is uh, taught all over the internet including Laravel documentation only only is teaching the basics the syntax how the mechanism work but that's that's not actually what testing is about or shouldn't be uh, remember the goal of the testing is not to have tests is to not have bugs <laughs> so it's 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 a long way between just starting testing just running PHP unit with with a few tests uh, and up to lessen the, the bug amount for the project. So the first problem I will rephrase, the first problem I see is lack of real-life examples, where actually a new, well, relatively new course by Adam Watham called uh, Test Driven Laravel, that stands out, and that is hugely popular, and I recommend that, because uh, what Adam is doing is actually uh, creating a real project, well, kind of real, and explaining the test logic behind it, what are what are the tests? Why are there? Uh, why are there in that way and stuff like that? So that's much more uh, interesting and useful. So problem number one: lack of real life examples. <clears throat> problem number two is uh, writing tests take time, and that's a common argument in in tech world in general. Not only PHP or Laravel. Like if you're doing it right, then TDD approach is usually quicker. Like, it's, uh, there's a constant debate that it takes time to write tests, but on the other hand, if you spend time writing tests, then you wouldn't have to spend time fixing bugs. That's true if you, if you know what you're doing. Again, that comes back to, uh, to the problem number one. A lot of people write tests just for sake of writing tests, 
and then it takes time and then it doesn't give any value and then still bugs happening and then that tests are basically pointless and uh, <clears throat> another thing uh, which takes time for testing uh, if you change something in your application later you have to come back and fix the tests not fix but uh, append update the test and uh, if another developer so for example you write test for something then you write code uh, for that test and then another developer takes over that project then they need to understand the test understand well have to basically have to update both things both test and, and application and if you forget about updating tests <clears throat> for a while then the tests are basically useless they, they become useless after a while because they're not testing the latest version of your application so you can throw them out basically so in my experience that does take time for smaller projects for smaller budgets for smaller teams that time doesn't really pay off i mean in, in my experience maybe maybe we're doing something wrong but that additional time for testing uh, it didn't really save time in the end at, at least in our case that's problem number two that writing tests on a good level again uh, on a deeper level uh, takes time because <coughs> in other words i'm sorry for my voice today it's something something's weird <coughs> uh, so if you want to write real tests you have to get sheet of paper and, and pen then write down all the cases for for testing spend time on more like architecture on more decisions of edge cases what are we testing for and uh, and it does take time so if you want to do it properly then it does take time and problem number three <clears throat> and actually it all ties together in the end that in my experience automatic tests don't really help and that's you will throw stones at me by <laughs> by, by saying that but uh, again if you stick to that level of writing tests just because you want to test if if that post returns uh, code 200 then it doesn't help it doesn't prevent all the bugs for edge cases it doesn't help it tests the basic things it tests that basically all pages are loading correctly which is just the basic level of like everything goes well but bugs are still happening they're all related to edge cases which you don't test for and then you you don't really save too much time so tests help only for for like sleeping better that you, you know that the page is loading you know that the, all the pages are loading uh, all the forms are basically loading well but even the forms like if your form contains like seven fields for example one related to another and there is a case that the person just decided to fill something really like something invalid happens like person chooses I don't know a text for uh, for phone number and and phone number format is is different in his country or something and you have to think about all edge cases for all the phone formats in all of the world which you might have to but uh, but in 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 simple cases um, simple tests only test simple cases I'm repeating myself here but I, I hope you get the point that uh, uh, if you want to do testing automatic tests with PHP unit whatever types of tests well like unit testing behave be had PHP spec uh, like whatever types of testing you have to be really deep uh, in in that subject in subject of testing you have to know what you're doing you have to know all the syntax including like all the asserts for all the cases how to test how to mock stuff how to uh, do the session stuff like pretend to be a user in that particular case and that's really hard so my overall point is that uh, testing is um, testing works and it's useful for some types of projects and some types of uh, team and some types of budgets even so if if all is aligned like if you have a team that uh, people are uh, uh, all aligned together in thinking like we have to do testing and we have to support testing and we do TDD maybe then everyone is doing that on the team 
if someone is not doing that, then it fails. Then uh, you have budget for that, so the client agrees that you do have tests, uh, test coverage, whatever the percentage is. Like you rarely have hundred percent test coverage, but there's just the client agrees to have budget for that. Then uh, that usually means that the project risks are really high, so you're working with like. Uh, really sensitive data or like financial stuff or something like really risky so all the bugs are critical so that's probably important and that also probably affects the budget uh, which you have like a serious project with serious uh, client with serious budget and with team that have experience in testing experience in specifically writing tests running them specifically and uh, and using them because otherwise, if you have, like, just if you're starting doing the tests, then you will start with those simple uh, testing if 200 appears, 200 code, and that doesn't really help a lot, to be honest. So, my overall point um, in this, like, if you're starting doing testing, then please start to get deeper from the first project. Start to get really serious on, on testing edge cases, thinking about edge cases, and to be honest, uh, testing automatic testing is not about writing tests in terms of syntax. It's about uh, getting uh, architecture uh, in uh, architecture ready and know about edge cases. Know about um, what are you testing? What are the again? What other cases? There will be a lot of them. It will be pretty complicated. Tests will be running for like minutes perhaps, uh, and, and that's okay for bigger projects. Um, you will learn a lot of new things, uh, but uh, if, if you want, if the client tells you, or like your senior developer or CTO tells you, like, we, we need to do testing, and you have like, like the, the command from, from the upper management, like, yeah, we need to do unit testing, and we need to have uh, test coverage, and you just go to PHP unit, write some tests, like, tests if store or create operation is working then it's not, i wouldn't advise to do that i mean all the things that are generated by laravel actually or like other code generators like 99 percent they will work like uh, it's not it's pretty hard to screw something up in laravel uh, it's uh, the home framework is is ready for you to to perform certain operations and there's no much sense to to test it you have to test deeper stuff you have to test the logic of your application which only you know about so my overall point again is if you if you want to do testing do it properly do it deeper read a lot about it uh, go to adam wathen's course on test driven laravel or any other deeper course or deeper book about unit testing or whatever types of testing and then you will succeed Otherwise, stick to manual testing and you'll be fine. Or use, by the way, or use Laravel Dusk as browser, browser testing, that new thing that appeared and kind of changed the, the world of, of testing. So you basically can tell the browser to go this, do that, go there, do that. And if you succeed, then return the, the code. That's, that's another way of, of thinking. And maybe that's the way that it's more human friendly and, uh, and more popular these days so these are my thoughts on testing again it might be controversial you might disagree with me i'm happy to discuss in comments so what I, what types of testing are you performing in your application do you measure whether it's successful in the long term does it save time does it prevent bugs uh, does it make your client happy does it make you sleep better does it make your development team more aligned please share your thoughts and uh, visit our sponsor, quickadminpanel.com, as usual, and see you in the next videos of Laravel Daily Channel.